Hello, it's Mike, and welcome back to ILoveMyTools.com. Today I thought I'd share with uh, our members uh, the second piece of equipment I ever bought, second major piece of equipment, my uh, six-foot floor-mounted uh, Sears drill press, which I bought back in the late 60s. So for those of you seeing this video today, you can do the math and realize this is an old piece of equipment and it's still in service after all these years. I really lucked out with this because they didn't know much about drill presses, and then this one had so many natural features built into it that over the years I found those features indispensable. So I now judge all drill presses I've had to work on since then on other job sites and things by the standard I set with this one. The first thing is it's got all the controls up front for everything that I need to do. It has a light that lights the work bed. It has uh, the power on and off. It has simple to adjust belt speeds, which I really do like. Up under here, we have a stack of pulleys driven by a quarter inch V-belt, and the speed range goes from 380 RPM to 480 to 720 to 1325, which is pretty much where I work with it. It has, uh, it can go all the way up to 8550. I don't think I've used that twice in all the years I've owned it. But it's nice to know that I tend to work down low at the lower ranges. I do find that it's great with large diameter objects that you could work with. I will sometimes put a, a hole cutter in this as big as four and a half inches in diameter and cut with it into three quarter inch material. I've cut holes in quarter inch thick steel with this up to an inch and three quarters, inch and a half. Good size. It's got a great travel on the spindle to come down. And what it has also over here, it has a depth gauge so you can set how far it comes down and it's quick and easy to do. But it does come way down as you can see. It's probably got uh, Oh, five inch travel. It can also lock, so you can set your drill bit just above your work and put this in and, uh, and pretty much have a, a locking collar here. And I can set this down in any depth so my drill bit is just above a mark and I can line the mark up where I exactly want to drill and clamp my piece down so it doesn't move. The machine also comes with a lock so the head swivels in either direction and it is adjustable on the six foot column and this column is a real sturdy column it's it's more than just a piece of tubular steel it's probably quarter inch thick or uh, five sixteen thick sidewall cast iron base that's bolted to the floor and it, so you can lock it where you want it this also swivels on this so that you can swivel this table back and forth and uh, I, I have to admit though with this quarter inch V belt up here I was a little concerned because it looks so small and so, or about maybe 10 years ago, just to make sure I had availability, I bought another one. It, I still have it unused. This is the original belt that has been on this machine since the late 60s. And I've used this a fair amount, this machine. I also did something else that you might want to keep in mind when you're placing a drill press in your workshop. I've placed it in an area straight across from a door. And if I had to, I could drill a 20-foot piece of steel which is pretty much your standard length of drill into a 20 foot piece of pipe or, or a board that long because I can send it out the door and put it on a stand and level it to the table or level the table up and down so that piece is perfectly level and I'm drilling um, something that normally would be very bulky. If I had to, this machine also, I could take off this table and I could bring this drill head down to the floor if I needed to line up or put something heavy on the floor like an engine block that I wanted to uh, drill a hole in or a heavy piece of I-beam or something. It is that universally available. I did make a couple of modifications over the years with accessories to it, which I'll show in the next clip on this. But one thing I did do, I just got a couple of milk crates, I made a little top, and uh, clamped it with U-bolts to the column so that I kind of have work shelves underneath to hold all the various accessories and clamps and things and wrenches and things I tend to work with when I'm working on the drill press. Um, I did enhance it with a bilateral uh, uh, dual directional feed uh, vise like what would be on a milling machine and I'll be, like I say, I'll show you that in the, in the next video. All in all, it has given me great service all these many decades, and I would recommend anybody serious about a workshop, either for wood or metal, get yourself a good drill press. You will find that it's uh, well worth the investment, especially if you're into really doing repetitive drills that all have to be precisely in the same part for multiple parts. I can drill 100 holes as easily as I could drill one hole. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. My trusty old uh, ancient drill press, 
that I bought when I was a teenager. This is Mike DeZino, America's Blind Tradesman. Thank you for coming to ilovemytools.com. Join our newsletter, participate in our chat, and share with us what your favorite tools are. And until next time, stay safe, stay productive, and enjoy your tools.